Hey, it's Julie Faith Fam Balzer here with another exploring art materials video. And today we are going to be exploring the Groove tool by Artsy. And full disclosure, this tool was sent to me uh, for me to try out. So there it is in its package. I'm taking it out. Um, I did read on the box that two AA batteries were required. So, and by the way, I do often read the box just to make sure that I know what the basics are before I actually start to play with it. So the first thing, of course, is to unload it, check it out, and finding the battery compartment was pretty easy, and it reminds me of like maybe a TV remote or something like that, so nothing hard there. And then the next task is figuring out how to attach the, um, well, the attachments, and as it turns out, you sort of push it on and pull it off, so not hard at all. There isn't a right direction or anything like that, so uh, the first thing I'm using here is just a little foam tip, and to show you this, there is an off switch, low, and high, so three settings, and the foam tip you can see here, it reminds me of like ink blending foam or a cosmetic sponge or something like that. Um, so I thought I would try it out with some Distress Ink, which is how I would usually use like the ink blending foams or something. I wasn't sure how to load it, so first I tried just rubbing it while uh, the tool was off on the ink pad, and you can see I'm getting some ink onto the foam. And then I simply applied it to the tag, and with almost all my experiments, I started on the low setting and then sort of upped it to the high. I didn't notice a huge difference between low and high. I did have some trouble controlling the tool, as you can see here. It kind of skips all over. I wasn't sure about pressure and that kind of stuff stuff. Um, when switching to the red, I left the tool on when I applied the ink, and that was fine. It didn't like spatter anywhere or anything like that. So you can see now, Distress Ink is known for being very blendable, so I thought I would try some stenciling as well. Um, I wasn't sure how accurate that tool was going to be, and you can see it's kind of leaving some gaps as I stencil, but the thing that was kind of nice and surprising was even with all those gaps and stuff, when I pulled the stencil off, you couldn't tell. So I don't think that this would work with a really detailed stencil, but it does great with a stencil with lots of large openings that you can see right there. So pretty cool. The next thing um, is I saw that they suggested like inking edges, and I thought about using archival ink, which is permanent, and I decided instead on using distress ink because as it says on the box, you have to clean the unit and the brush tips after each use. So in order for me to clean that ink tip, um, I really I need to use something that's going to wash out, and distress ink is going to wash out because it's water soluble. So I had some trouble controlling uh, the inking of the edges there. It, it just it kept sort of falling off. I wanted to kind of run down the side. So I tried putting it down and then I got a little more of a shadow on the side of it, which is fine. Um, and then I just tried moving my hand at the same time that the head was rolling and that seemed to be sort of the most effective way of doing it, although I did still, I, I'm kind of all over the place. I think it probably takes a little bit of practice. But there you go. You can see those sort of smoky edges. I think they look good. Um, it does, again, very much remind me of using blending foam or anything like that with it. But instead of having to push down with any pressure, you can hold the groove tool very lightly in your hand. So next is the brush attachment that I thought I would try with some paint. And I, again, wasn't sure on off, but I decided to try it on and go slowly in case it's battered everywhere. And this is the magical thing. I thought that spinning brush was going to just like send it everywhere, but it didn't. So that's fantastic. So then I just uh, ran it over my tag. I started with low on the top part, the low setting, and then at the bottom of the tag I went to the high setting. And again, I didn't really notice a huge difference between low and high. I did try to clean off the brush onto the scratch paper that I'm working on um, because I didn't want too much paint on there. And you can see it, you can see the impression of the brush gets left in these kind of circular sweeping motions. So then again, I thought I would try some stenciling, and it looks like it's giving some really good coverage, which is great. It's going all the way. And when you pull it off, there's your stencil design. But I did notice something when I pulled it up, which is right along the edges of the stencil, there was like an extra layer of paint. When you use a cosmetic sponge or something like that, it's very flat. It dries right away. So I thought I'd use some deli paper to see what was happening to investigate the situation. And when I pulled it up, I saw the outlines, which means that, yes, a lot of wet paint had gathered at the edges of the stencils. And I think that's just the nature of the brush and the way that it works. So um, just information informational more than anything else. And you can see now that I flattened it out, it is a little bit darker on those edges where uh, there was extra layer of paint. So switching colors to the red, I was hoping to keep it pretty true by making sure it was nice and clean, uh, but it did not stay that true. However, intricate stencil with tiny little openings, and I thought that the groove chill did really well at it. I was surprised, very pleasantly and happily surprised. It looked great. And again, I did the same thing where I took some deli paper and I pushed it down 
over the top of it um, to lift up and see what kind of paint was there. And actually, I actually ended up pushing it down over not only the tag, but also over the stencil to see how much was left on both of them. And you can see there's quite a bit of extra paint on there. But you know, that's nice. You can get twice the uh, prints for just one application. So uh, next up, I tried to clean that head as best I could because I knew I was going to have to wash it off at some point. So I'm just going to set it aside for now. But now there's two sanding tips and I was checking the box to see the difference between them. So the pink one is the fine sander and the brown one is the coarse sander. So this is a tag that has some ink underneath and then black paint on top. And I thought I would see how it did if I could remove some of that black layer on top to reveal more of the purple underneath. Um, and then I also wanted to try sanding the edges. So I use low on one side. This is the side that I use low on. And then on this side, I use the high setting. And again, I I don't think you really see a big difference. However, when I switched, oh, and by the way, yeah, you can definitely see that it took off some of that black paint. Okay, so this is using, is the before, so you can get a picture of what this looked like before, and now we're going to try doing the coarse tool on top. And I don't think it removed a ton of paint using the flat application a little bit, but it did a great job on the edges. So really nice way to sand up those edges and give it that nice, cute look. So this is a wooden box. I think chocolate came in it at some point or something like that. And there was a gold seal and now there's just part of a gold seal left. So I thought, you know, let's see if it's a useful tool as well, not just an art tool. And can it get that gold seal off there? And it did. It did a great job. Um, I did it in stages and it sanded it down. And the nicest thing of all is that it sanded it down without leaving any kind of like groove or anything. Like the box is just feels normal now with that seal gone from it. So that was a pretty cool thing. Then I had um, heard through the grapevine that you could stencil onto wood, basically sort of like some of the wood getting burred down by the sandpaper. So I tried it. Um, I don't know if I'm using the wrong wood or what, but it didn't really work for me. Mostly I just transferred the paint from the bottom of my stencil to the box. I also was able to clean my stencil. You can see that the area that had layers of paint uh, that I hit with the groove tool now has no more layers of paint. So that's awesome. So that's a great way to clean your stencils if you so desire. Um, but I even tried to clean some of the paint off the bottom of the box. And again, I don't know if this is just really hard wood. For whatever reason, I don't have a lot of wood stuff to alter in my house. So this was the only box I really had to try it with. So here are my dirty tools. I thought I would take them over to the sink to clean them to see how that went. Um, and ta-da, I'm magical. So the sanding, I I ran it under the sink, you know, it didn't really come off. I'm not sure it's supposed to. I've never washed sandpaper before. Um, the foam, however, cleaned up really well. It does look a little bit stained, but actually if I grab some paper towel, what you'll see is that even though it looks like it's stained, what is in there is really only water because you'll see it's just totally clear. There's not actually any ink in there. So that's cool and fine. So we'll just set that aside to dry. And then the brush kind of blew me away because that was acrylic paint people that was on there and it sat there for a while before I took it to the sink and it came out like boom like not even a second did I have to hold it on there or there forever or anything so I thought that was pretty cool too so I, I don't know why I thought it was gonna be dirty so Here's another look back at some of the stencil tags we did. And I guess my final analysis is it's a fun tool. I think it would be really cool to use to stencil a large background. The brush tip without question is my favorite tip. Um, I think you could cover a large background pretty quickly. Um, Otherwise, you know, I think it's a fun tool. It's ergonomically comfortable. It's totally easy. I don't know that it's like a necessary tool, like run out and buy it right now, but it certainly is fun. Anyway, if you're interested in more tips, tricks, tutorials, and everything else that's super fun, like me, come visit my website at balzerdesigns.com. Thanks so much.